Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. In this video, we will be discussing about accessing, configuring, and managing our vCenter server through HTML5 based vSphere client, which is introduced newly in vSphere 6.5 as the future client. This new version of vSphere client will eliminate some of the headaches of using vSphere web client. For example, slowness while browsing vCenter objects through vSphere web client, dependency on Adobe Flash Player to access your vSphere web client. Now, this new version of vSphere client does not have any dependency on third-party applications to run it. All that is required to run this HTML5 based client is to have a recently updated web browser. So let's browse through managing and configuring vCenter server through this new version of HTML5 based vSphere client in this lab. So let's get started. Open your browser. VCS give FQDN of your vCenter server. So in our case it is vcsa one govmlab.local now you could see there are two clients are available to access our vcenter server the first one is web client which requires flash player to ex to run and the second one is vsphere client which is a pure html5 based client so as discussed in this particular lab we'll be exploring html5 based client so click on vsphere client html5 and now you would have observed it does not ask us to run Adobe Flash Player. Provide username of your vCenter server, SSO username. So it, in our case, it is an administrator at the rate of vSphere.local pass, SSO password. Click on login. And now you could see this is our vSphere client, a new generation, a future client of VMware. And if you see this particular dashboard looks like exact same what we had it in our C-sharp based client, right? So VMware always try to provide you same user experience what it, what it has with the C-sharp based, Windows based, Windows based C-sharp client. So now you could see in the inventories, we have a host in clusters, VMs and templates, storage, networking, global inventory list, monitoring, we have a task, events, VM customization, and administration. We have for licensing. Now click on host in clusters. So host in clusters, you could see. In a, so this is our host in clusters view. As of now, there is no data center created. There is no host added to vCenter server inventory. So what we'll do first we'll create a data center so right click on your vcenter object click on new data center to create a new dc and give a name go vm lab hyphen dc click on ok so now you could see in the task pane the create data center task is completed and now we have a data center created now to add a host to this data center right click on data center click on add host give a ip or fqdn of your dsxi host which you want to be managed by this vcenter server so in our case i'll give a name esx hyphen zero one a dot govm lab dot local click on next give a username root password of esxi host click on next certificate and now in this view it just gives the summary of your esxi host the host which you are going to add to your vcenter server is esx-01a.govmlab.local and it is a nested esxi because it is in the model it is showing you vmware virtual platform which means which means sorry which means it is your VMware virtual platform or your nested ESXi environment. If you would have added your physical server, then it would have shown, shown you the hardware vendor information and model information. Now version of version which is installed on my ESXi host is 6.5.0 and the VM which is running on my ESXi host is Windows 7 VM. 
now click on next so there we have a lockdown mode so as of now we since we are not discussing in the lockdown mode so proceed click so, so go with the default option click on next and now you could see this is the overall information of your host click on finish and now you could see in the task section it is adding that standalone host to our data center named is govm lab hyphen dc so now you could see now you could see our host is added successfully to v center to data center and there is a vm windows 7 vm which is running on that host now similarly if you want to like as i as i as as you might be knowing the vcenter server is used to manage multiple esxi host right you don't need to open up a dedicated host client of each of the esxi host to manage them individually that's one of the biggest advantage of vcenter server is a centralized management appliance through which you could manage entire data center so if you want to add another host just right click on your data center click on add host follow the same process give of your give a name or fkd and ip address of your another esxi host which you want to be managed by this vcenter server for example let's say if i give esxi a.govmlab.local click on next provide credentials click on next accept the certificate and again it it shows you the same thing again go with the default option next finish and now you could see the another host is being added to your vcenter server which is esx-02a.govmlab.local so now you could see you could add multiple esxi host to your vcenter server and you could manage it from here itself right so let me just remove this host what we have added okay so in the summary section you could see it is showing you the host host count virtual machine count how many machines added on this data center clusters network data store information so this is a host and clusters view which will give you information which will give you information about which will show you information about your host and clusters this is our vms and templates view if you click it here browse to your data center it will show you the vms which are running on this data center this is our storage view if you click on storage browse through it it will show you the data store which are being managed by this data center server data center then it's a network icon network view if you browse through it it will show you how many networks are being managed by this go vm lab hyphen dc data center now in this section if you see you could get the information about your vcsa or vcenter server appliance it is running 6.5.0 version the build number installed with now you click on monitor monitor section the first section is issues and uh, issues and alarms so as of now all issues since we have not come across any of the issues so there are no issues or no items to display triggered alarms you could see there is no alarm which is being triggered but you but this particular wizard is used to monitor your alarms which got triggered on your data center so you could vary you could see all of your alarms here then we have a task and events if you click on task you could see what are the task which have been perform, performed on this particular vc like as we have added if, if you see here we have added a host so if you want to get the information we have added a host to this particular data center we have removed the host so there's an information you could get it from this thing then we have a event section event section gives us information about what all the event has been triggered on this vcenter server session information talks about what are the sessions what are the active session at this point of time so you could see the vspe.local administrator session is being active and all of the other solution user session are being idle 
so this is what this monitor type is all monitor option is all about where you could monitor your alarms issues task events and sessions active sessions now click on configure configure section where you could go and configure specific parameters of your vCenter server so in the statistics if you see it give you information what is the estimated space is required is 16.71 GB interval duration when your inventory will be it will be fetching the information is five minutes see for one week and all of the stats basically to showing the statistics interval your vCenter server will be capturing and saving it if you click on estimated if you click on database database will give you information about the maximum connection you could have is 50 task cleanup is enabled retention is 30 days of information it will be retaining it up even cleanup is enabled similarly we have a lot of other options runtime settings you could configure user directory SSL settings etc licensing licensing where we go and configure the license to our ESXi host message of the day if you see you you can click on edit and you can configure the message welcome message advanced settings advanced settings like there are a lot of advanced parameter if you have any specific requirement you can select any of the you can I mean these are the these are the advanced parameters advanced settings configured for your vCenter server then we have a alarm definitions you could see what are the alarms have been configured if you want to add a new alarm you just click on add alarm and here you can go and define a new alarm so since we are not deep diving into the alarms and monitoring section so we'll have a dedicated lab in which we'll be going through these alarms will be creating various alarms and browsing through it so in this in the scope of this particular lab we are just by browsing through the different options available in the vSphere client HTML5 based vSphere client then we have a storage providers a storage providers gives us information about what are the storage providers are installed on your vCenter server so as of now we have this storage provider IO filter which is running on your ESXi host so this is what pretty much config tab is all about then we have a permissions so there it shows how many users are there what all the permissions which are assigned to your users so if you could see administrator user is having all of the administrator role where the vSphere web client is having a read-only permission global permissions if you want to add a new permission you just click on this plus sign and then you can define a you can select a role so you can select a users what are the users are there and then appropriately you can select a role which you want to assign to that specific user then click on data centers so data centers gives data center view will give us information about how many data center you have created on this is specific vCenter servers as of now we have only created go vm lab hyphen dc we're having a one host and one vm running on this which is being managed by this data center if you have a more than one data center you can you could see it here itself data center folders since we have not created any data center folder so that's why there is no data center folders to display click on host and clusters so host and clusters in the host if you see by default host tab is host object is selected so we have only one host at this point of time esx-01a.govmlab dot local the state of those that host is connected if you could see the cpu utilization is zero percent monitor so you could monitor all of the cpu and memory utilization of your esxi host now click on clusters to get the clusters view since we have not created any clusters so there are no clusters to display now the next is vms so click on vms so vm virtual machine the first option if you see the virtual machines the first object what is by default selected is virtual machines so as of now we have a windows 7 hyphen vm which is state is powered on normal provision space 
huge space CPU utilization memory is 1.03 GB. You click on VM templates in folder since we have not created any of the template. That's why there are no. That's why there are no templates you could see. No templates to display. If you go to V apps, there are no V apps created on our data center. That's why there, as of now there are no V apps to display. But if you have created v templates in your environment, you have created V apps in your environment. You could browse it from this inventory object. Now click on data stores. As of now, we have only one data store. One. We have only one data store, which is data store one. State is normal. It is formatted with VMFS five. The capacity of your data store is ninety two point five GB, out of which seventy five point four one GB is free. If you have more than one data store, you could browse it or manage it from here itself. Data store clusters, as we have not created any data store cluster, so there is no data store cluster to display. Networks. So if you see in the networks, we have a one standard boot group vm network is created so the name so name is vm network that is a standard boot group there is only one vm which is connected to this vm network boot group which is our vm windows 7 vm there is only one host which is which is mapped to this data center and is it being managed by this vcsa this vcenter server distributed switch since we have not created any distributed switch so there are no distributed switches to display Similarly, there are no, since there is no distributed switch, so there is no distributed boot groups to display, and there is no uplink boot groups to display. But if you have VDS created in your environment, you could see all of the objects in this UI wizard. Linked vCenter server systems. So this linked vCenter server systems will show you how many vCenter servers are being linked with each other. In our environment, it is a standalone vCenter server which has been deployed and it is not being linked to any of the other vCenter server. That's the reason, as of now, we don't have any linked vCenter server systems to display. I will have a specific lab in which we will discuss about how do we link vCenter server with each other for simplified management. So this is what pretty much is all about. If you click on Actions tab, it's again show you the same objects what we have explored so far this is our recent task tab where you could see what are the tasks you are being performed it will logged in here alarm sections alarm sections what are the alarms has been triggered on your vcenter server at any of the object whether it's being a data center host vms cluster you could see the alarms on this alarm pane itself This is why I think this is what we have in this particular lab. If you click on this, you can change password of your administrator at the rate of vSphere.local user from here itself. If you change time form, you want to change your time format, you could define your time, you can change your time format as well. So, this is what we have pretty much in this lab. I hope you guys like this video. Thank you very much.